Hi, my name is Tom, and today I wanted to go through a quick 3D printing calibration cube comparison between the four 3D printers that I have. This little 3D printing cube has been going around on Thingiverse lately, and it's been pretty popular, so I decided that I wanted to try it on my printers to see not only how well calibrated they are, but also how they compare to each other because I have several different models, each with their own quirks and issues. I've got two of the Monoprice Maker Select mini printers. One thing I realized really quickly with 3D printing is that if you have one printer, you kind of do a lot of waiting. And so that means if you're doing like a 10 hour print, there's nothing else you can do in that time. And that's when I realized really quickly, it made a lot of sense to get a second printer. So that way I could be doing more printing and have more fun like at the same time. So I quickly went, I think within a month of ordering the first one, went and got the second one. The first printer has been perfect the entire time I've owned it. It's not given me any problems whatsoever. The second one is a bit of a different story. It had a warped bed, which meant it sort of had a concave dip in the middle, which really hurt the print quality. I could have sent it back to Monoprice, but it was also a really good chance to kind of dive in and see how to fix things on my own. There's a pretty simple fix for the warped bed on the Mini, which was just to go to Home Depot and buy a sheet of glass. That was nothing I had ever done before, but these are like under $2 each. And then buy a $3 glass cutter, and then you can cut the glass to fit exactly as you need it. So all in all, it took about $5 and maybe like 20 minutes of time, and then I had a perfectly smooth bed for that printer. I wanted to buy a printer for my classroom, and so I bought the Monoprice Maker Select Plus, because it's a little bit bigger, it has a little more capabilities than the minis, and like for a classroom, it also look, it's... It's cool looking, it's kind of intimidating looking. Students see it and think that it's neat. And this has been an interesting printer. It works pretty well, and when I first got it, I was really impressed with the quality of the prints, but it's really fussy when it comes to how you're slicing your prints, and I've been using Cura, um, and I get really mixed results. I've had to play with this printer so much just to get decent prints out of it. And then last, but definitely not least, I have the Prusa i3 Mark II S. Um, I ordered this printer the day after Christmas of 2016, and I received it at the end of March 2017, so it took a long time, but it's super worth the wait. Um, I think what's pretty much been said with this printer a lot is you almost feel bad for other printers when it shows up because it's so good that why would I want to use anything else when this just prints so, so good. So between all of those printers that I have, the Prusa, the Plus, and then the two Minis, that's a wide spectrum of print quality, of abilities, and things like that, which is why I wanted to print the calibration cube. I'm trying to keep all the settings the same across all the printers, so for the Prusa, I sliced the model using Slicer because there's a special Prusa edition of Slicer that comes with the printer that works pretty well, and that's what I've been getting the best results with. For everything else, the two minis and the Select Plus, I use Cura because that's basically what I've been using since the beginning. I kept all the settings the same as they're recommended on the Thingiverse description, which is 30% infill, 0.1 millimeter layer height, and I kept the temperatures the same, which was 205 degrees on the extruder and 55 degrees on the bed. And the prints took about an hour to complete. I made sure to use the same brand of filament on all four printers. It wasn't the exact same color, but I used Hatchbox PLA because I found Hatchbox to give me the best results. The filament that I've gotten the absolute best results on every printer with was the silver spool that actually came with the Prusa. Um, it's almost empty and I'm really sad about that because the quality that this gave was unbelievable. It looks so good, everything is so detailed. I know you can order whatever brand filament this is directly from Prusa, but they're so backed up with their orders that it takes a long time to get orders processed and so that's not really practical. Hatchbox you can just buy on Amazon and then it's delivered in like a couple days and you're good to go. Um, I've also got some weird stuff like this 3D Solutech filament which is pretty cool. Um, it's like this shiny blue and it has this really cool texture. This can have a hard time printing on certain printers. It works great on the Prusa, like the results are unbelievable, they're super clean. I printed stuff like this pen holder that's really cool looking and works really, really well. I printed several of those. Also printed a case for DJI Mavic that like the quality on that is unbelievable again. Um, I've also got a lot of colors of PLA from AIO Robotics, which I like because they sell these little half spools for like 10 to $12, which is great. And they're just on Amazon. Um, the only problem with this, print quality is great. 
Um, I found that if you leave it in the printer for a day or two and then try to use your printer again after a while, this stuff gets really brittle really fast and can actually just, like that just broke off right there. And it can snap off in the printer, which is frustrating, especially on a printer like the Mini that has a Bowden tube and then you just have this string of filament that's kind of stuck in there and you have to start taking stuff apart to get it out. This is great filament, but you definitely need to take it out of the printer if you're gonna let it sit for a while. All four printers are running Hatchbox PLA. Two of them are silver, one of them's doing white, and one of them's doing kind of a gold. The cube's all finished. They took about an hour to complete on all the printers. I did have one issue, which was I had just cleaned the glass bed on one of the minis, and even though I put super glue on it, um, it's still, I guess I didn't put enough or I didn't put it in the right spot enough because the cube that it printed came loose about 80% through and just started dragging around the bed. So I had to reprint another one on that printer. So the next step after the print is done is to take a digital caliper and measure the cube. It's supposed to be 20 millimeters on all sides. I've got the Prusa, the Plus, the first Mini I bought, and the second Mini I bought, and then the cube has the X, Y, and Z sides. So the conclusion is that the printers are all fairly close. None of them are 100% precise. The first Mini is real, real close with those 19.99 and 19.97s. The two printers that are the closest together are definitely the Prusa and the first Mini. It's pretty impressive when you consider, in terms of price, how different they are, that those two printers can be so comparable when it comes to accuracy and calibration. So there's a couple of reasons I decided to do this print today. Um, the first one is that I just wanted to print something and I like having all the printers going at once because it's really fun. And then I decided it might be interesting to do a quick video on that so that other people could see I don't know how conclusive these results are. If there's any sort of takeaway from it, in terms of my recommendation, I would kind of suggest either staying towards the cheaper printers like the minis or the higher end stuff like the Prusas or even something beyond that. It sort of seems like when you get in the middle with the Maker Select Plus, it's a good printer, but you kind of lose the simplicity and the reliability of the cheaper printers, but you're not really gaining the print quality of the more expensive printers. So you're sort of in this space where it's like the print quality is okay, but also it's not super reliable, and that's not really the best place to be. So anyway, I hope that was helpful or interesting, and I will see you guys later. Thanks.